pathwaysoflight.org. Welcome to the reading, A Course in Miracles workbook, Lesson 30, Insights. God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. If we can see past the angry person to the real person inside them, then we can forgive ourselves and see God in ourselves also. If we can hear the opinionated person and see past those opinions to the real person, then we can forgive ourselves and know that we are one with God. If we can be with one who is whining and complaining and see the God in them, see their wish to be happy, see ourselves in them and know that we are forgiven and we are all one, And then we know we are also forgiven and are at one. The God or love that is in everything and everyone is what is eternal. The God or love in my mind is what is eternal. The God that is in everything I see is what is real. It does not change. It is beyond time and space. It is all that is. It is all. Today I am learning to return my mind to the truth. I am learning to focus on what is real in everything and in everyone. The eternal changeless love that is all that is. Remembering this truth brings me peace, joy, and happiness. What a happy thing to practice remembering it all day long. God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. This lesson uses you in reference to us as if we were the ego. There are many places in the course where he refers to us using you, where it is helpful to discern what this you is is referring to. In this lesson, he is acknowledging what we think we are or what most of us think we are. Chances are, if we are reading this book, we are to some degree identifying with the ego as what we are. The course point blank says, you are not the ego. Yet here he seems to be referring to us as if we were. This is because he is referring to us the way we think we are. I can certainly recognize that I do not see God in everything I see, though I truly want to. So this lesson acknowledges where we are and gives us a tool to help us let it go. It is helpful to remember when he seems to be referring to us with ego characteristics that we are not the ego. He is merely acknowledging that we believe we are the ego. It is this that needs to be undone. It is this undoing that the lessons are for, that this entire course is for. I am grateful that Jesus does not accept the limitations that I accept. It is his vision of innocence that I am striving for and that his support makes it easier for me to accept. It is why I want to see God in everything I see. I want to know that God is in my mind and I am one with God. I want to know that I am love. There is a light in my mind, a light I tend to ignore, a light I tend to define, a light I often won't allow to be itself. It is a level of consciousness in which I interact with control. And as I make my own interpretations about this light at that level, I experience the world accordingly. The guidance of this lesson inspires me more deeply to resign the meaning I think I need to give to the light of God. I am inspired to let it be. I am inspired to trust it even more to reveal itself as whole, abundant, free, sharing, one with me. 
I want to be in the world, but not of the world. To see the world and know it is not so. To live with the human sight of differences and separation, while knowing the body's eyes see not the truth, for true vision rests in the mind where I am one with God. This vision I must practice. I must remember. I must be mindful. My mind must be full of God because I have consciously and consistently chosen the reality of oneness. There are many textbooks for human eyes to read about experiencing God, but there is only one God in which we all are joined. The course contains instruction that everyone can understand. And a wonderful way to practice that really helps us allow our minds to be healed and filled with God. When our minds are filled with God, our bodily eyes will not deceive us into believing illusion is reality. Today, I choose practicing. Today, I choose remembering. Today, I choose oneness because this is already in my mind. When I experience oneness in my mind, I can see oneness everywhere and be filled with gratitude. In today's world, it is finally becoming popular to realize that most of our lives are reflections of our attitudes and our thoughts. We are beginning to see that only a change of our own mind can execute any real change in our lives and subsequently in the world. There are many sources of this concept. Some are spiritual with and without God as the power behind the spirit. Some are body oriented such as sports and habits that need breaking. While other sources are found in the self-improvement in professional psychotherapy fields. And let's not forget Madison Avenue advertisers and the psycho babble gurus. Yes, even they speak, use the truth. We, who believe, or try to, that God is everywhere, in everything, in our minds, are so very fortunate to have the easy way to find about this concept. We know God. We know the power of source. And just as importantly, we have the guide who will show us the how-to, to use this power to change our priorities in this world to reflect his creation. Every time I struggle with the course material, I am reminded of how hard it would be without it. A couple of nights ago, I had a disagreement with my son. He was very angry with me and hung up on me. This was so upsetting. We never argue and he has never acted like this. I went through all sorts of emotions Anger that he should treat me with such disrespect. Self-doubt because maybe I could have handled it better. Fear that this will affect our relationship. The blessing that came from this is that while trying to deal with it, I suddenly saw very clearly that this is another special relationship. I love my son very much, but I love him best when he loves me. I love him best when he gives me what I think I need and lack. Love and respect, admiration, obedience. When he doesn't supply my needs, the relationship suffers. I had never before been able to admit that even my relationships with my children are special relationships. When I saw this, I was able to give this relationship to the Holy Spirit to heal. I want this to be a holy relationship for my sake and for his. It took all that day and into today before I started feeling good. And all through today, whenever I thought of my son, I would think about how God is in him because God is in my mind. 
I also noticed that once I asked for the healing of this relationship, I began praying for my son's well-being. I began to ask that his experience, I began to ask that he experience God's love and comfort. For the first time since this happened, my focus was on him instead of on myself. I had been projecting all the bad things I was making myself feel onto my son, and I was able to quit doing that. I feel that I have been blessed with a powerful insight, and that our relationship has been blessed with a powerful healing. He called me to ask a question late this afternoon and was on his way out of town, so we didn't have time to talk, but he promised to call me back this weekend. In the meantime, I will continue to see God in my son and in this relationship. Pathwaysoflight.org